we're going to be doing traditional toolies, um, toolie toys. I don't know. It was really funny because I was thinking, are they traditional Pomo Tuli toys or are they Pomo Tuli toys or are they Pomo traditional toys? It's it's all so complex, but they're toys. Um, they're toys with meaning. So we're going to start out with a PowerPoint. Um, every class that I teach uh, has a little bit of learning in it. So I want to talk to you about the Tuli. I know that we have really kind of a mixed group on here. We have educators, we have children, we have adults. So um, I want to just make sure that everybody gets a little bit of knowledge. Um, welcome to the Grace Hudson Museum and Sunhouse Virtual Event, Traditional Pomo Tuli Toys with Mio Marufo. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about, I know that David and Alyssa both said something about the Grace Hudson Museum, but I wanted to say something a little bit more. The Grace Hudson Museum highlights regional art, culture, and natural history in the tradition of a, the extraordinary family, um, the native uh, Ukiah natives, uh, and nationally admired artist Grace uh, Carpenter Hudson and her husband John Hudson. They provide opportunities for cultural engagement, art appreciation, historical reflection, and hands on learning through three areas the galleries where you can see short-term exhibits, permanent collections showcasing Grace Hudson's art, and then the Pomo Culture and Basketry um, wing that just opened up um, fairly recently. The Sun House, which is the home of the Hudsons, and then the Wild Gardens, which I actually have um, one of the posters in back of me, but the Wild Gardens that teaches about our local environment and the landscapes of the Pomo Indian people. So hello everyone, my name is Mio Marufo, and we're going to learn a little bit about toolies and some of the toys that we make. Um, so there are more than 20 Pomo tribes in California. The Pomo territories range from the east, uh, from the Clear Lake Basin to the Mendocino Ukiah Valley to the Sonoma Coast and Valley. I'm actually Eastern Pomo. I'm from the Clear Lake Basin and my tribe is Robinson Rancheria. This is my family. Um, I'm married into Kashaya. And so um, I married into the Coast Pomos. And these are my boys and my husband. My boys are much older now, but these were good pictures, so I grabbed them up. The Wild Gardens is an outdoor educational environment focusing on the native Northern California plants and habitats, as well as plants used in the cultural traditions and land management practices of the Pomo Indians. Uh, when you receive this kit, the tule that's inside the kit uh, was collected from the wetlands area of the wild garden. There are two types of tule in each one of the kits. Tule is one of the most fascinating plants. It is part of California Indian culture. It is one of the most versatile plants in California and a multiple species that grow in the different environmental regions. Two major species in California are the common tule which is pronounced Schenoplectus acutus. And then the California bulrush, which is Schenoplectus californicus. In addition to the native North America, Tulis and its relatives are used around the world. This is the California bulrush, which has tall, thin, dark, dark green stems, which are usually triangular in the cross section. Um, they have kind of bristly brown flowers. So the, these water plants are usually found in marshy areas like the edges of the lake, um, on slow rivers and creeks. More they're found in ditches around. And this is the common tule, which is rounded and it's much easier to use because it's a softer tule. And this is kind of the one that you can build with and you can make things with. And it's edible. But I don't want to tell people to go out there and eat it because the bulbs on this are edible, but the water that they sit in may not be. So you actually have a mix of the two different tulies in there. They both grow in the, in the wild gardens, wetlands area. Um, we're going to use them. I don't want you to be afraid. First of all, this is tule, so this is not meant to be a forever plant. This is a pithy plant 
that breaks down um, over time. There are some examples that have lasted a very long time in the museum, but for the most part, these aren't going to last forever. These are toys. These are just let's make them, let's have fun, and then just learn how to make some more. Um, so if they break, if they fall apart as they dry, don't be scared and don't be don't be dismayed. Um, these are just meant to be fun. So prior to contact, Pomo peoples of Lake County and some parts of Mendocino and Sonoma counties use tuli to make houses, clothing, mats, baskets, and tools. Here are some of the examples of housing made with tuli. So these aren't like the little houses that you see represented today. When, when people show tuli houses, they often show these little type of bowl houses and they look like they belong in the Hobbit Shire. The bottom left hand uh, is a tuli house. And to give you kind of an idea, that's about 10 to 12 feet tall and it's about 25 feet in length. So the gentleman working on the Thule house there on the bottom right hand corner of this slide, that's more representational of what a Thule house is. I know that for, for demonstration purposes, a lot of people have this conceived idea that Thule houses are very small. They're not. The real Thule houses are actually quite big. Even though the substantial part of your day was spent outside and your house was basically for cooking and for sleeping um, and storage, but those houses are multiple family houses. And so oftentimes you would have, you know, you, you and your son's family or your, your daughter's family. So those houses can get very substantial in size. And that's kind of lost today. Um, you know, like I said, it looks like the Hobbit Shire when people talk about Pomo Tuli houses. So the bottom left-hand one is more representational. Tuli boats are made in the Lake County region. Um, we've held a Tuli boat festival for over the past 10 years. It began with one of our tribal elders um, wanting to teach the art of making traditional Pomo Tuli boats. It's a three-day event. Um, on the first day, the teams focus on collecting enough tulis to build a boat. The second day is to start building it, and both children and adults build the boats. And Big Valley Tribe is the one who hosts it. They usually have an instructor that goes around and shows people how to build them if they don't know. On the third day, teams race the tuli boats there that they made. It's a fun and exciting day to watch. Um, many people have come together from near and far. We make Tule boats in Lake County, but we are not the only Tule boat makers. Um, there are Tule boat people up north, there are Tule boat people to the east, and there are Tule boat people to the south of us. Um, our boats are built more barge-like. They're, they're more for carrying things and they're not built for speed. Uh, other boats you can see um, down south or even up north, they're built for speed, they're built for cutting waves, they're built for taking, transporting people, one, two, three people, and transporting them back and forth. Our boats are built for um, hauling stuff across the lake. Uh, so the Tully Boat Festival is held in Big Valley, usually around July, around the uh, summer solstice, and it is also open to the public. So usually you'll start to see flyers, Facebook posts. Um, yeah, it's open to the public, so everybody's always welcome to come and enjoy. So when I was around 15, um, actually, it was a a couple of years earlier than that, but I, I usually say around 15, I became really hungry for all knowledge on all things Eastern Pomo. Um, most teenagers go through a time where they're finding themselves. My thing was I wanted to learn everything. So I started learning about Thule, um, boats, baskets, toys, 
I started learning about regalia. Um, but one of the toys that we make is a bittern, or it's an American leased bittern. And when you look at the bittern, it stands straight up in the tulies with its neck stretched up and it sways slightly. Its markings make it camouflaged in the tule. So the story behind the tule bird that we're going to make. The story says that the bittern bird stands tall in the tule, hiding with its neck stretched out and swaying to act like the tulies. It stands there so that it is the first to see the hitch moving towards the creeks. It makes a sound that can be heard by the Lake Pomo and it's ready to tell us when it's time to go to the creeks and get ready to fish. So when you're in Clear Lake in the late winter, early spring, which is actually about now, after the, after the cold rains end, um, next month they'll start to travel. The hitch will start traveling up the streams and you're gonna hear a sound and it sounds like a giant water drop and it goes gunk, gunk. And it just sounds like a big giant water drop dripping. And it's one of the sounds that the, that the bitcher makes. And it's really, if you go online and you look up the sound, they also make a tick, 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 tick sound, but this dripping, it doesn't sound like it could come from the throat of anything, but when the hitch start moving up the stream, if you go and you know where the hitch start coming up and you listen in the tulies, if you're away from the road, if you're away from everything and you just listen, you will hear that gunk, gunk. And it really, it's, it's really deep and it resonates and you can hear it for, you can hear it for quite a ways, but the bittern tell us when the hitch are coming up. And so that's why we started making the bittern birds. There are other stories about the bittern bird. There are other stories. Everybody has stories about the different toys that they make. This is just one of them that I've heard. So the hitch are the indigenous minnow that lives in Clear Lake only. There are uh, hitch there are minnows that are indigenous to certain areas. Um, this is a smallmouth minnow, but it gets up to 10 to 14 inches and they're edible. But what they do is when they spawn, they live in the lake, they live in Clear Lake and they're indigenous to Clear Lake. So when you hear the word hitch, it's usually our fish here in, our, in Lake County. They um, like I said, they get about pound, pound and a half, maybe, I don't know. Um, but they get up to 14 inches. And when the cold waters come down the streams, it sets off a spawning cycle and they start going up to the streams. Unfortunately, we don't have as many streams available due to agriculture and pulling off water. So they are actually an endangered species. They're not fully listed as endangered, but they are, they are in danger. These fish used to come up the streams like Middle Creek, Adobe Creek, Clover Creek. Um, they used to come up the streams by the thousands. So if you've ever seen like a really big salmon run, um, how salmon spawn, Picture that times five, times 10. You used to literally be able to walk across the fish. Now those fish are coming up the streams by the hundreds. That's a large number, but when you talk about how many predators there are, when you talk about the water being pulled off and a lot of them get landlocked, then it's, it becomes, you know, a fish that's a species of concern. Um, they keep the lake fairly clean. They don't keep it clean like it, you know, it's not now because there's not enough of them, but they eat the plankton and the daphnia. 
that's in the lake. So other toys include dolls. The wood doll, the wooden tule doll is actually a doll wearing a tule skirt like the Eastern Pomo women used to wear. And also um, sometimes when you go to the other parts of the Pomo regions, they're wearing um, skirts made out of bark um, because the women there wore bark. The eyes are usually clamshell with beads. The other dolls are tule only. Uh, these dolls often have accessories, much like Barbie dolls do now, except these would have had baby baskets and tools for living. Um, miniature baskets and tools show both boys and girls who play with them about everyday interactions and start to learn, have them learning about how to use their baskets, how to make little things to start them weaving. And I want to I want to let you know right now that these dolls are played by both men and women, um, the boys and girls. This is not a gender specific thing. Our dolls are are both genders because if you make a woman doll, if you split the tule skirt and you twist it, it becomes legs and you can make the men dolls. So these are not these are not gender specific. I have not heard of them being gender specific. Um, the Thule, Thule and Wood dolls, um, even though those are the female skirts, they are still played with because sometimes they don't have the Thule and they just have the necklaces. So there's, yeah, I just want to make that really clear because I often hear about our dolls and they say, well, only the girls play with this, only the boys play with that. No, that's not true. You know, the reason why our children play with all these different things is so that they can learn what is needed in their lives. And so if you have a doll and that has a basket and it has tools, then you start understanding what those tools are used for in your daily life. The little girl on the bottom left is has a Thule wood doll in her baby basket. And that's so that she begins to learn what it takes to care, you know, about one, uh, about a baby, what it takes to hold that baby, but also to gain interest in those baby baskets and the making of these things. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, when we, when we talk about these dolls and when we talk about toys, you know, I don't want you to say, well, only the boys made this, only the girls made this. That may be true in some tribes and that might be true in some toys, but these ones here, it is not that I know of. So you, everybody picked up a kit. If you didn't have a kit, you have some scissors and you have some tooling ready. But um, hopefully you have your scissors, hopefully you soaked your tooling. So inside the kit are, I'm gonna pull it over because I've been having mine in water. So there's tule of different lengths and different, um, there's actually two different tule like I told you. So you can see this one is the round and then right next to it, this is the bulrush. So when the bulrush is actually more fresh, can everybody hear that crinkly? So that will, you're crinkling the pith, but also the outside of it is not really, it doesn't like to bend and it's not as soft as the round. So the round is what you would use for pretty much everything, but they, we have the bulrush ones growing out there, so we wanted to use those too. So you have your you have your your bunch of your tule. Um, let me wrap this one up, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to take one tule, okay? And that's gonna be the start of the body. And we're gonna take one tule in the back and one tule in the front. Does everybody see how that's doing? 
okay? So this is actually going to be, picture this as the beak of the bittern. This is its neck pointing up. And then this is, we're going to build the body down here. So we're going to take this back one and we're going to fold it over the front. And we're going to take this side and fold it over the front. So you can see its beak is starting to move forward a little bit. And then I have, so I have this one and then I have this one in the back. Are we ready for the next step? So I'm going to grab another piece of tule and I'm going to put it in the front. Okay, and I'm going to take this tule and I'm going to squish. Squish it a little bit, squish it a little bit. And I'm going to squish it a little bit on this side, squish it a little bit. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm gonna fold it up or down rather. And then I'll take this other side and I'm folding it down. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start that one more time for everybody. So I have my, my center piece and I have one in front and one in back. And I'm going to fold this one forward, the one that's in the back, and fold it forward. Then I'm going to take another piece. And I'm going to squish, and I'm going to squish. So I'm going to squish these, squish, squish, squish. And then I'm going to fold this one forward. Now you can see it kind of split a little bit. That's okay, this is Tuli. We'll pick more. <laughs> come over to, no, don't come over here and just pick everything, please. Uh, but there, Tuli grows everywhere. So we're gonna take this side and go forward also. So now it should look like that. I'm gonna add another one. And you can see that I'm not adding, you know, there, there are different lengths a little bit. I'm just trying to keep it in the middle. And then I'm going to squish, squish, and then fold it down. And then squish, and then fold it down. And we're going to add another one. And I'm going to squish and squish, and then I'm going to fold this one down. Okay, so this isn't a huge bird. Um, I mean, we could make it super long and we could make it, you know, really, really long. But the bittern, its neck is long, but its body is. If you look at the pictures of them, we don't need to make it too, too long. Five to five to seven rows is good for a bittern. And because this is kind of short here, we're gonna want to make this our last one. So this one, it doesn't have anything to fold over, correct? So I'm gonna squish it and I'm just gonna fold it down, squish it, and fold it down. So now, is everybody at that point? Okay, I see some yeses. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this part of it and squeeze. Use all your hand strength and squeeze. I actually have a lot of water coming out of mine because I soaked it. All right, so I took my hand and I'm squeezing it, squeezing it, squeezing it. And then I'm going to take one of the thinner pieces 
and I'm going to use it to wrap it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hold it with my hand and just kind of make sure I keep it held. And I'm going to cut, because this is where your scissors come in, I'm going to cut at an angle. And that's going to be kind of my needle for when I finish wrapping it, I can push that down in there easier. So the non-cut end, I'm going to take and I'm just going to wrap it around. And it's just a basic wrap, wrap, wrap. And then I'm going to take this part that I cut like a needle and I'm going to go down the middle. And it should start showing. There it is. And I'm going to start pulling it little by little because the bulrush will, will shred. And there we go. So did everybody have a good chance to wrap? Do you want me to do it again? So once you have it wrapped, oh, again, OK. Um, I that absolutely okay so I'm gonna undo it okay so remember I squeeze 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 and I'm going to cut this at an angle so that it just kind of goes in it makes its own needle and it'll go in easier and I'm going to wrap it around Remember, you're still squeezing it, wrap it around. So you want it kind of tight. And then I'm going to take this point and I'm going to go down the middle. You don't necessarily have to go down the middle. I'm going down the middle because there's a natural little uh, funnel right there or tunnel or dip or so I'm going to push it down. Then I'm going to let it loose a little bit and I'm going to find it. Maybe too loose I did. Yeah, I held it too loose, but. Hold on. There we go. I'm just tucking it in there so that so that it stays wrapped. And then I'll pull it down. Okay, and so in order to finish this off. Is everybody good with that wrapping? So you're just kind of tucking that in to make sure this little wrap stays on. And you see I have some shreds here. I'll just cut those off and make them neat. And then the other thing about the bottom of the bitter is that it comes out this way and then it goes in. So I'm going to cut these at an angle because the bitter if we went back to the slides and we don't have to, but if you look at it, it has these skinny little legs. And so we want to make those little legs. So this part, we don't want to just end his body. We want to give him legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it at an angle. So I'm going to look at him. Okay. So I'm going to cut it at an angle. So you have your scissors. Make sure you don't cut through that. And I'm just going to cut it lightly at an angle. And I just spin it, spin it. So that it's at an angle. And then I'm going to cut, I'm going to trim it so these are nice and. And there we go. 
there's a bit turn. So when it stands up, if you look at me instead of my hands, when it stands up, it stands straight up like this, up and down. And see the lines, the markings are up and down, just like the regular bit turn. And then it its beak is up. So you can also make it so its beak is down if you really want to. But its beak is usually up, straight up in the air. And then it just sways with the tulip. So, oops, sorry. Hit my camera there. So when this dries totally, it'll get a little bit looser. And it'll turn brown, just like a bitter. And so you can just take this part off, wet this part only, and then you can tighten it up if you want to keep them. So that's the first doll that we're making. So this is the tuli. So everybody should have some reeds left, correct? Do you want to make another doll? Do you want to try one of these? Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have some you have some you have some stuff left. So the thinnest one I want you to put the thinnest one to the side. We're going to use that one later. So put the thinnest one you have to the side. If you've already used the thin one, don't worry about it. Pick the next thinnest one. So then I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take this one here. And to make the doll, first thing you want to do is make her head. So I'm going to say she has a fairly big head. So I'm going to fold and fold. Remember, this is bulrush. It'll shred. Don't worry about it. It's a toy. Don't, don't overthink it. So I took my, my tulip, fold, fold. So I made her head about that big. Okay, then I'm going to take the one of the thinner ones and I'm going to make her arms. So I'm going to hold it underneath her head and that'll be her arms. Yes, they're long arms. No, she doesn't have superpowers. We'll cut them in the end. Um, this is a little too long. <laughs> but then I'm going to take one of my bigger toolies and I'm going to go sideways. Kind of like giving her hair. So sideways on each side. So you're kind of, it looks like you're giving her kind of hair because all the toolies are different colors. And then we're going to take another bigger tool and I'm going to squish it in the middle because I'm still holding this one. So I'm going to squish this in the middle. And this is going to go over the top of it. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to do this one more time because I want to make sure that everybody gets this because then we're going to move into a different part of it. So I'm going to take the base and I'm going to fold and fold. That's going to make her it makes it thicker so that it's her head. Then I'm going to put her arms underneath her head. I'm going to take a thicker tulle and I'm going to go around the side. And it's the back side, front side, either one. So I'll go over her head. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to go over the top. Does she look like a doll right now? No, she doesn't look like a doll, but she will. So now you're going to take that thin one that you have. And I'm going to squish it all the way down because I want it nice and flexible. So I'm going to squish, squish, squish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around her waist. 
because it's below her arms. And I'm going to go turn it up towards above her shoulder. And I'm going to take this one, go around, and up towards above her shoulder. So let me do that again for you. And I'm going to pick one that's not falling apart so badly. Squish, squish, squish. Okay. Put it in the front. This side goes above the arms over here. And then this one comes, goes above the arms over there. Then I'm gonna bring it down. And I'm gonna bring it down. So kind of like the corn husk dolls to you used to go. You kind of do an X. And we can cut this part off, or I'll just pull it off. And then I'm going to wrap and just wrap like I did the last one, just kind of fine, wrap it, wrap it. And this one was kind of dry, so it's, uh, it broke. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, this one was too dry for me. Um, sorry, I didn't soak that one. I wanted to use it because it was nice and thin, but. I'll use this one instead. Squish it. Okay. Over and then over the shoulder. And then I'm going to take her and I'm going to push it up just so it stays wrapped. So I'm going to keep pushing it up, push it up, push it up there. And I'll use this kind of like an awl. There it goes. And then I'm going to do the same and just push this one down in there. And the reason why I'm doing it like this is because this wasn't very long and I didn't want to take her arms out. So I'm just going to make it work. Okay, so that's the back of her. This is the front of her. So you X'd over, X'd over, and then you've given her like a little belt, and you've given her a little top. So once again, she's not superhuman, so I'm going to cut her arms to what I think would match her personality. <laughs> so there's her arms. And then the bottom is her skirt. So I'm gonna cut her skirt. So I'm gonna pick the, the shortest one, unless you had a real short one up here that I picked the next shortest, but I'm gonna pick the shortest one and I'm gonna cut the skirt to match it. Okay. Then I'm gonna open my scissors up and I'm going to run it down the tule. And what I'm doing is shredding the tule because I like a full skirt and I know she would too because she's my doll. So she's going to have a fluffy personality just like me. So I'm going to make her skirt full because when I wear my skirts, I like my skirts to be more full as I twirl. So and I'm just going to shred up. And you can see some of the tulle comes off, but I'm going to continue just to shred it. And like I said, this is a toy, so don't get too serious about it. I know there are some people out there on the site watching this that are going to overthink it. But don't. Just shred. If it comes, if the tulle inside comes off, that's okay. You're going to shred and you're going to shred. So then what I'm going to do after I shred it through, I'm going to start pulling some apart. So I miss the bottom in here. I miss shredding that. So 
So these are actually really fun little dolls. Um, they're also beautiful tree toppers. Um, so there she is. And when you spread out her skirt, she stands up. And there you go. So these are just some, some toys from Homo Country. And if there's any questions, I can take a question before we uh, end this program. We do, do have, have a question. Can you gather um, the Thule at any time? Um, you can. Uh, you can gather whenever you want to. But as you start making toys or as you start doing things with Thule, there's a difference between gathering it when I don't know these when they look like this and when they look like this. So as they get older, they are the pith inside breaks down, and you can see it's kind of gotten old and nasty. And so when you're making a toy, it's just going to pull apart. With this, if you let it dry, it'll turn a nice, this is re-wetted, so, but this part is dry. It's nice in consistency, and the inside of it, as it's drying, still looks nice and healthy. So you want to make sure that you... Uh, I usually gather like right before summer when the tule is nice and green. And I usually don't gather the dead ones because they, first of all, they don't stand up to water as much. And if you're making a boat, you want it to stand up to water. Um, but also if you're making mats, if you're making anything that you're making, you want to make sure that you get the strongest part of the tool strongest possible. So yeah, I would gather when it's green. And then somebody also wanted to know, was the art in the slideshow yours? Yes. The, uh, the drawings. Yes, those are mine. which uh, those drawings in particular aren't available, but um, when the Sun House opens back up or when the California Indian Museum and Culture Center in Santa Rosa drop and opens back up, um, they do have my stuff available. Uh, yeah, I do cards and stuff too. Thank you, for, thank you for noticing my art, I appreciate that. So thank you everybody, I hope you had a good time. We went a little bit over time, but um, it was really fun. I hope to post the pictures on Facebook. Please take the survey. If you had a good time, let us know. Um, it always helps to uh, learn more about what people want. So thank you, everybody.